everyone loves technology. Well, most of us do anyway, especially when it comes to communication. Recent innovations and inventions have helped to shrink our world by bringing us closer together. But it's also driven others further apart. Technology has brought us to a point where we can no longer believe everything we hear, read, or even see. False information on social media. Why? Well, think about it. Dissemination of information is no longer controlled by the established news networks. Watching the news is unnecessary and a scam. Who do I blame? I blame the media. Anyone today who knows how to use social media can potentially get their ideas, their opinions and strong convictions out to millions of people. Yes, even those with personal agendas or selfish ambitions, they can do the same. Exclusive tonight on the conspiracy theory that came to be known as Pizzagate. And if it's dressed up, looks good, maybe panders to what suits you or the majority of people. Oh, and it's done in a way that plays to your passions and emotions, then you've got a following. Algorithms and manipulative politicians are becoming so expert at learning how to trigger us, getting so good at creating fake news. How about the truth? Yeah, it's out there somewhere, but because it's lost in the vast sea of noise, many have just given up looking. While for others, the truth is now whatever you want it to be, or feel it should be. And it's a battle that messengers of God have been fighting since the beginning, revealing the truth while exposing what is false. And as time and technology have progressed, messengers needed to adapt to the challenges these changes brought. And that's what this story is all about. How the work in these last days of getting the truth out there for the salvation of man has made the most of recent innovations and inventions in communications technology. Throughout history, God has always used messengers to reveal his truths to people, not only by having them written, but primarily by having them taught or preached. In these last days, that work has continued through God's last messenger and those connected to his work. In the early years of the re-established Church of Christ, Brother Felix Y. Manalo and his helpers, through the inspired preaching of the pure gospel, and by pure we mean not the stuff that was added or removed over the centuries, the pure gospel exposed unbiblical, man-made teachings and traditions practiced by millions of people for hundreds of years. So you can imagine how difficult it must have been for the people of the time to hear these teachings from the Bible, showing that these deeply ingrained traditions they held onto so dearly for many generations were actually unbiblical and even against Christ's teachings. But at the end of the day, the truth is the truth, and the truth will set you free. And that's exactly what happened. A great exodus of people leaving their old religions and converting into the church that was preached by Christ and his apostles. The true Church of Christ. To assist in the spreading of the truth, Brother Felix Y. Manalo utilized a revolutionary technology invented back in 9th century China and later popularized in Europe by the German Johann Gutenberg in the 15th century. The printing press. The result was the first publication or magazine of the Iglesia ni Cristo in 1939. The Pasugo, or God's Message magazine, of which Brother Felix Y. Manalo was its first editor-in-chief. This platform allowed the church's doctrines to be recorded and shared in a way that wasn't previously possible. The Pasugo magazine became a powerful instrument in bringing out the truth for salvation to many more people. During the administration of Brother Iranio G. Manalo, technologies to reach an even wider audience through the airwaves became available in the Philippines. 
No, we're not talking about those airwaves. I'm talking about these radio waves. This opened up a new era in communications media in the church. In 1967, the church's teachings were aired over the first church-affiliated radio station, DZEC. Two years later, the church launched its own radio station, DZEM. This was the first time in history the preaching of the true word of God could be heard live or pre-recorded simultaneously in the comfort of the homes or workplaces of thousands of people. It also gave people in far away remote regions access to these truths. In the 60s and 70s, television, which added moving pictures to audio, another technological breakthrough, was becoming accessible to many Filipinos. On the 18th of August, 1982, Brother Iranyo G. Manalo felt it time to propagate the church's teachings through this medium in a program called Ang Iglesia Ni Cristo over MBS Channel 4. Now, this was a great success in the Philippines, which resulted in the program being aired in the United States only a year later. Even though the show was initially in the Tagalog language, it proved to be a real hit in the United States. So an English version called The Message was produced and aired five years later in 1987. Broadcasting over the airwaves provided a new dimension in the preaching of the true gospel in that it brought the truth into the homes of thousands of people. Not only could they hear the message over the airwaves, but also see it being read straight from the Bible. This contributed to the massive growth of the church that was already happening at the time, not only in the Philippines, but especially in the West. So now, the global church has new challenges. How do you maintain complete unity in the way things are done in the church when you've now got literally thousands of congregations spread throughout the world? And two, how can the church remain united in true and pure doctrine without being influenced by the cultural practices in the countries where the church spread to? I met with some ministers who shared with me how these challenges were faced and overcome during those early days of the church outside of the Philippines. So far as addressing more than one ministers by the executive minister himself or by Brother Irani Manama, there was not that uh, capability at the time. And so if uh, there's any instructions to be uh, mentioned or relinked to the uh, ministers abroad, it was mainly through uh, telephone. But calling internationally on, on a regular basis from the Philippines to, to America, uh, you know, the expense of that is not like it is now where you can, you can call for practically nothing. So what, what was used was a telex machine. It's just like a fast uh, typewriter that uh, types out the information. That would be a, a, a quick little, little message, a decision, uh, an instruction. And, and, and boy, when we got, got those from uh, Brother Arani Manalo at the time, that was, uh, well, the, the, the feeling of the, the, the connection, you know, this is, this is from the administration, this is the, this is the decision, this is the instruction. And, uh, well, that was really something. For Brother Iranyo G. Manalo, this personal and instant line of communication was vital for the church's growth during those early years outside of the Philippines. An example was his personal correspondence with the late brother Colin Ringwood, a pioneer member in Europe and head deacon in the United Kingdom. You can see Brother Iranyo G. Manalo's personal guidance in the purchase of the very first house of worship and the registration of the church on the continent of Europe. In, in the late 80s and, and, and I guess probably the beginning of the 90s, we had which was really phenomenal at the time it was coming into existence was the fax machine. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> For those of you born in the internet era, there was a time when documents and images could only be sent via snail mail. So you'd have to wait days or even weeks to receive them if sent internationally. Enter the facsimile or fax machine, 
which changed all of them. For the first time in history, documents, or low-res copies of them anyway, could be sent anywhere in the world instantaneously and securely. This game-changing technology was employed by Brother Iranio G. Manalo, not only in effectively administering the global church, but also in maintaining unity in the preaching of the truth. Uh, I remember when uh, Brother Iranio Manalo sent me back to the States in uh, 1986. He told me, you know, whatever you find out there that would be of benefit to the church, uh, tell me. And, uh, and so I made a uh, recommendation that uh, if possible, uh, each local would have a fax machine. And then the fax machine yeah. came yeah. and the f they would fax wow. the lesson. That was, that was an, a great wow. advancement. That further connected us to the church administration because then we we're teaching the lessons, not only the same lessons, but on the same, on the same dates because we could get them in time for the, the worship service classes. And that brought us even, uh, even closer uh, to, to the church administration. Due to the efficient administration of the church and effective proliferation of gospel truths aided by technology, the growth of the church outside of the Philippines really took off. However, this rapid growth created new challenges for the church, in which technology would once again help provide the solution. Back then, uh, there wasn't enough ministers to go around, okay, to go to all of the locals, and the ministers were covering uh, such a vast uh, distance. During the pioneering days, we didn't have uh, ministers as we do now. And uh, when ministers were sent, uh, they would be officiating in multiple locals. The rapid increase of the brethren and congregations of the church outside of the Philippines outpaced the number of ministers assigned to those countries. So, for worship services to continue, and for the true word of God to remain as a guide in the lives of the brethren, another breakthrough technology for the time was utilized by Brother Iranio G. Manalo. Oh yes, uh, during the uh, really early pioneering days when we didn't have any ministers at all. What we would listen to are the cassette tapes, the audio cassette tapes. The compact audio cassette tape was another revolution in the 70s and 80s, especially for the music industry. For the first time, music was portable. This was massive. Think of it as the ancestor to MP3 players or music subscriptions of today. But the tape had another trick up its sleeve. It allowed for portable instant audio recordings without large and expensive equipment. The preaching of the Word of God could now be easily recorded, cheaply duplicated, and distributed around the world wherever there was a shortage of ministers. Time came that, uh, you know, the central office would be sending us more tapes. The uh, brethren truly were very grateful even to have those tapes. It would never dim diminish the, the spirituality of the worship service. Just hearing the voice of uh, Brother Irani Manama preaching the words of God, uh, that was very fulfilling. The humble cassette tape played a critical role in helping Brother Iranio G. Manalo to care for the spiritual needs of all of God's people wherever in the world they were. And for those, like Brother Bob Pelin, this further highlighted the need for more ministers. It just made us uh, feel all the, all the more uh, wanting to help the church administration. That's kind of how I ended up joining the ministry. Okay, so the church is huge now. There are more ministers than ever before, not only in the Philippines, but also abroad. Brother Iranio G. Manalo now needs a more effective way to coordinate with and address the ministers scattered across many continents. How do you do that? The technology we were used to was uh, teleconferencing, which means 
that you can uh, one caller can speak to multiple uh, people at the same time at different locations. The idea of someday seeing the executive minister and hearing him uh, talk to us, teaching the lessons uh, directly, uh, we, we didn't see a possibility of that. Prior to uh, the video conference technology, you would have to fly to the Philippines to be able to hear and see uh, the executive minister. But yet another breakthrough technology was once again revolutionizing the industry, the communication satellite. And once again, another and more significant dimension in overseeing the church was presented to Brother Iranyo G. Manalo. It was the very first ever uh, video conference uh, from our central office to a location uh, here in uh, America, which is uh, Santa Clara, California. It was very exciting to see uh, for the very first time uh, our executive minister able to address the, his, uh, the ministers uh, outside of the Philippines. Uh, he's 7,000 miles away and you can actually see him along with his voice you can hear. So. Uh, that was a tremendous uh, breakthrough in technology at the time. It was the next best thing to being with him in person. We were very privileged to be part of that uh, historic event. Uh, that was in uh, January of 1994. This was the first time in history where audio and video could be transmitted live to any location on Earth. Try to imagine what that must have been like. I know in this FaceTime and Zoom era, it's hard to grasp just how game-changing that was for the time. But remember, before that, the only live communication was only through telephone. So this was a massive deal. And this capability couldn't have come at a better time. Because a few months later was an important milestone of the church. The 80th anniversary of the Church of Christ. And a major part of the celebration was the first ever worship service and ordination of ministers broadcast live via satellite, this time to multiple sites around the world. Again, to do something like this in the 90s wasn't like opening up your laptop today and just clicking a link. The amount of hardware and manpower needed for an event of that scale was absolutely enormous. But what made this event truly historical was the oath-taking of Brother Eduardo V. Manalo as the Deputy Executive Minister of the Iglesia de Cristo. On this day, not only was the primary helper of Brother Iranio G. Manalo introduced to the entire church, but also the one who would eventually lead God's nation when the time would come. In the years that followed, Brother Iranyo G. Manalo, with the assistance of the Deputy Executive Minister, went full force in the use of broadcast and communications technology. The Sound and Video Facilities, or SVF, was created to support the growing number of the church's TV and radio programs, as well as to film, document and broadcast the worship services officiated by the Executive Minister then. Various channels on television and stations on radio were created to serve as platforms to expose false teachings and reveal and teach God's truth and message of salvation through a variety of formats, from preaching shows, documentaries, movies, and even news. He was always looking forward. He was, uh, his uh, vision is always uh, ahead, advanced. He knew that uh, this is just the beginning of bigger things to come. And in fact, that was the case. Indeed, it was the case. This same open-mindedness in embracing emerging technologies was passed on to the one who would soon lead the church. But this time, in a completely new age in communications, an age that would change our world forever. 
join us in the second and final part of the series where we look at how, once again, inspired leadership is utilizing emerging technologies to keep the ever-growing church united more than ever during a time when the world is growing further apart.